Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to a new episode of Chill Time with Kelly. I'm your host, Kelly. Sorry I've been absent lately. You had to go through a period of time of uninspiration a little bit, which says a lot coming from me, but there was a period of time where things were just going absolutely crazy, crazy, and recording podcasts was turning into a challenge and wow I yeah I could not fathom recording during that time of like craziness but I am back and in honor of my birthday which was honestly two weeks ago I did a episode last year when I turned 24 of 24 things that I learned before turning 24 so this year it is 25 things I have learned slash done before turning 25. And I've actually split this in half. So 12 of these things are lessons that I've learned. And 13 of these are experiences that really made the biggest impact on me at the age of, well, sorry, by the age of 25. And there are a lot. So grab a drink grab water, tea, whatever it is. And I'm hoping you guys take this episode as inspiration as the journey is different for everybody, but we all experience great things. And honestly, any good thing, any bad thing, they all make us who we are today. A bad things could turn into lessons. And good things, embrace them for sure. So the first thing that really, really helped before I turned 25 was self-love. Now, self-love was something that I lacked for a really long time. Because growing up, there was always this, I don't know how to express this, but there was always this point where I felt like I had to constantly please others but honestly pleasing myself was an extreme challenge and I'm never I never say oh don't obviously like spread the love and of course show love to others but also show that love to yourself as well and if you're dealing with a time period of not having self-love definitely try to take a step back and evaluate the importance in your life and just know always that self-love always comes first before any kind of love and which ties into the next thing that really really was an important lesson for me was care for others now this one I kept a little bit more vague because obviously care for others is extremely, extremely important. Now, how I've been able to care for others and even strangers um, where I live was that I have helped strangers in general. So I've helped this um, elderly lady down the subway one time. And then I helped this other lady help, help her load her stuff onto the bus. But then I took it a step forward and helped her unload her things off the bus and into the subway. Now, the expressions I see on their faces is truly, truly nostalgic because honestly, the response I've gotten was, if it was not you, I don't think I would have gotten any help. And that honestly does truly break my heart sometimes that... <clears throat> there that a lot of people in um where I live they would just ignore it and just go about their own day that's what I've noticed but defining the odds and just trying to break that stereotype really really made the biggest impact on me to show that I'm unique and I love it and care and express things for others and definitely would inspire you guys to do the same thing as well and that ties into the next thing of the smallest things leads to huge impact 
So just by doing someone nice, something nice for someone else it completely made their day. And I complimented uh, one of my friends over text. And he always told me that he's not used to getting compliments and possibly would not get used to it. And honestly, that would definitely, like, how just like how a small compliment changed someone's life really, really has made me smile for sure. And I still do that up to today for sure. And the next thing I have that really has made the biggest impact on me before turning 25, things get better, not worse. So there was a time period um, in like my 20s that I basically thought the whole world was against me. And that came with career issues, job issues, friendship issues, relationship issues, everything under the sun, almost, I felt like I was dealing with. And I've seen this quote of said, like, everyone is going through something. You're not the only one. Which, obviously, I know that is true. And, but knowing that things have gotten better for me and have changed for the better definitely would make me want to go back to that person in my past and just tell her things are just going to continue to get better. This, what you're dealing with right now, is just a bridge for you to find your happiness again because it is teaching you what you don't want in your life and this will help you figure out what you do want in your life and I think that has that mindset really really made the biggest difference and the next thing that really has helped me at least with my mental health was you don't need to know everything now in one of my old jobs, I basically was talked down so much when I would say, oh, I do not know that answer. And if I ever said that in my old job, I would get like talked down, penalized, and it just would not end well. So, because, and even though they, I would, they, they would tell me, oh, just look it up. There are so many different answers on the internet for that specific question. And like there was never a one size fits all answer. So the reason why I would constantly say, I would, if whenever I would say, like, I don't know, but then would, would um, <clears throat> look it up and then give an answer, that answer was not right, would go back to look for another answer, the answer was not right. And then, just she just told me me okay you are not capable of doing this you need to go and that definitely took a toll on me mentally but here where I am now if I say I do not know it is a respected I don't know then we find the answer together and we have discussions of what we think the correct answer is so this uh, and I'll give an example actually. So the other day we were discussing a specific protocol, and I've never done the protocol before. And I would say I don't know, and it was respected. It was I didn't get talked down or anything like that, and that truly, truly helped for sure. All right, and we were just discussing it. We figured it out together, and she praised me and told me you can really work through this and I'm really happy to have you here and honestly that totally made my day and that kind of also ties into the next two things of what really made the biggest impact on me was so number six and number seven is leave what doesn't make you happy but at the same time kindness is contagious so those two things kind of tie in together because I was able to leave a job that I did not like, like, and because of that, found something else that I truly loved and I'm truly good at. And 
because of that, I have become a much kinder, more calmer, <clears throat> more rounded scientist slash person. And because I, I now that I'm in such a good mood all the time and I'm able to spread my kindness um, to others, it definitely makes their day and it definitely make I feel like makes makes it more of a pleasure or to be around for me to be around myself because if I'm not kind and I think this goes for a lot of people like if they're not kind or in a good place it's hard for other people to be around them I'm obviously I'm not speaking for everyone but I'm just speaking from personal experience because I feel like if someone is not being nice it or is just like being like calm or like a well-rounded person it makes them very unpleasant and hard to be around and that's it's just I found out that's really important to me these days so the next thing is excuse me um enjoy new experiences which is uh, number eight so enjoying new experiences is something that I really have really just I've really been trying out new things like going to concerts. I've been doing a ton of photo shoots because I am a freelance model and all of that is so new to me, but it's literally the best thing in the world. And I'm just overall super happy. And that kind of ties into the next thing, which is separate my work from my personal life. And that was something that was really difficult for me to do at the beginning because my mind was on work and schooling like 24-7. I never got to do anything that I enjoyed. And that just what I felt like made just made it more unpleasant to be around myself. So now I definitely am respecting that boundary. And I do not work 24-7 anymore like I used to. I just really, really separate my work life and my personal life. And when I'm with somebody, usually my phone is off um, unless we are looking up something together, which truly, truly amazing um, time when you're just disconnected and just with someone that you really care about. And the next three things actually also tie in together. So 10, 11, 12. Number 10 is lessons learned opens new doors. number 11 is challenges are bridges and number 12 one impact can change so much and I feel like all three of those things tie in together because and like I said going back to me quitting a job that I did not like I and I had to learn the hard way that if I just bottle up my emotions that they are just going to explode on me. And it kind of did during at that time. And that's just kind of what made things even bigger challenge. Because once I stopped bottling and then I tried to make a change, it just turned for the worse at the at that time. But in the long term, actually, it turned out to be the best thing that I've ever done. Because If I didn't leave that, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I think that's a very important thing for everyone listening. If you're thinking about quitting a job that makes you unhappy, do it. Because it is not worth sacrificing your happiness and for the sake of something else. Because then you're just going to possibly, I'm not saying this happens to everyone, but I know this happened to me. I grew to resent my job and... I also at the time resented science. And I, by the way, I have been doing science research for nine years and I never hated it. And so like I seriously have been doing science research since I was 16 years old and like I'm 25 now. So I'm doing this for nine years and I never hated it. But that job made me really hate science research. And it took me a long time to realize not that I hate science research, I just hated wh- where I was working and in the environment that I was in. And that honestly made the biggest change of just taking a step back, reevaluating what I truly wanted, 
and getting out of what I knew I didn't deserve. And that's where the challenges are bridges and the one impact can change so much. And so take action, even though it might be so black and white at the time, you don't know the outcome. It could also be the best decision you ever made. And you just learn from mistakes, aches, and don't let these mis- kind of mistakes break you down. So the next the the next um thirteen things are definitely experiences and that I have done that really, really, really made the biggest impact on me this year. And number one is definitely a magazine interview that I did. It so I did the magazine interview way back in March, and it was with a bold journey. They highlighted my journey in science, and that was the scariest thing I have ever done, in all honesty, because I've never been so raw and vulnerable before. Um, to that extent because there's so many things in that interview I've never talked about and never shared but it was all out it's all out there now Um, my journey the challenges I have faced uh, during my career in science research and just overall the gist of that is don't give up the reason why I published my journey is to overall just help others. And I think that's super, super important. And the next, this number two that really, really made a giant impact me is attending concerts. So I love music and I love attending concerts, but I have never, I haven't even, I've only recently started doing it. First one was heavy metal rock. Then I attended a pop concert. I'm attending another pop concert in a couple weeks. So I'm super, super, super excited to just be able to let loose and have fun. Music is truly an escape for me. It just helps get me out of the science nerd zone that I'm constantly in 24-7. And it's it's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. And um, the next two things is um, very, very um, basic, but not so basic to me. But uh, I got a new job that makes me truly happy. So that boosts my mood all the time. Got a new car, uh, which also boosts my mood. And the next thing is more of a challenge that I've had, but it's basically finding the balance. Now, this finding the balance experience has definitely been a kind of like a black and white experience for me because I do so, so much like in between being a master's student, being a podcaster, being a research scientist. It is a lot. And not to mention, I do freelance photo shoots all the time. And that is super, super important to me and I'm actually going to share I guess some printouts from my latest photo shoots um I don't know if you can oh yeah you can see it like right here so it might not be very clear but oh yeah let's not do that um so if you're watching this on YouTube you could see it right here it's one of my favorite photos I have ever ever taken and it is so pretty too and wow, I still cannot believe how stunning those photos came out. But honestly, I'm just super, super happy and finding the balance in between doing everything I love, hobbies, um, hanging out with friends. And uh, it's been a lot. It's a lot for sure. But I do think finding the balance is more of a learning experience. It's not a all, it's not a one size fits all for me. But it's just constantly learning of what works and what doesn't work. And the next thing is number six. And this one is super important to me is blocking outside opinions. So blocking outside opinions is definitely something that is really, really 
difficult for me sometimes because I know there is positive opinions and negative op opinions. And blocking out the negative opinions is super, super important to me. And it's um, definitely a challenge. I definitely do not block out the positive opinions. If someone tells me, oh, you could do, you're doing amazing on this, but maybe you could do better on that. Like that's a positive opinion and I will listen to that. But you have to be able to filter out, blocking out the um, negative opinions and actually taking it as feedback. So why I say blocking outside opinions, it's basically taking what resonates. So if you know you need to improve on something, definitely taking someone's outside opinion is really, really important. Like for me, when I first got my new job, um, there was a lot of opinions shot at me back and forth. So I really had to learn to filter out those opinions and just truly, truly know what works what worked out for me and what did not work out for me. And the next one is more of, um, I've talked about this a lot already, but it's three lives in one. So just balancing my research scientist life, my master's life, my modeling photo shoots um, life-wise, my own personal life-wise, my friends. And oh, it, it's definitely a lot. It's definitely a lot for sure. But I make it work and... I know everyone who's listening, if you know me personally, you definitely know how I do it. And honestly, I'm still not going to lie, I don't know how I do it sometimes because, like I said, at one point, I know I've talked about this so many times, but it's definitely the highlight of my journey. And you can read all about it in my magazine interview, which the link is um down below. But it's just basically balancing one full-time job, three part-time jobs, being a full-time master's student, going through the hardest time of my life, and just overall trying to keep my sanity as a human. That was, that, just the sound of that sounds beyond impossible, but you find a way, and it will definitely work out. And that kind of ties into the next thing is, Actions speak louder than words. So, and why I say this is because I can definitely say something and you literally, it could sound impossible, but if you take action towards it and work towards that goal, it's not impossible because Take podcasting, for example. I told myself I want to start a podcast a really long time ago, but I've always was too scared to do it. But I, I took the leap of faith, and I love doing it. There are obviously times where I have to deal with being uninspired, but it works out for me for the best. And I just overall don't give up. And I think that's what's super important too. And the next two things do tie in together, nine and 10, is being transparent, but along with being open to change. And why I say be transparent is just mean be open and honest with myself and with my friends. Because I am a very, very spontaneous is interesting human being because I have defined the odds in so many different ways. And that's actually kind of why I do science research too, because I feel like in science research, you're really defining the odds in a lot of different things. And being open and honest with like my friends and because I had to turn down um, a lot of different things because I'm on a pretty tight deadline for work. And when you're on a tight deadline for science research, you literally are working against the clock and you're working against everything because you don't know if the results are going to come out good, but you need it to come out good for the important submission. So that's just kind of what mainly I was struggling with for the past couple of weeks, which is what made me lack podcasting a little bit, but I definitely do miss podcasting. So. So that's why um, being transparent. So that's why I have to be transparent with myself, being transparent with my friends. 
and being transparent with my audience too because like I said without an audience chill time with Kelly would not exist so and that's why also being open to change is super super important because I have to be flexible with everything that I do and it's not like oh oh like I can go to work at like work from like you know nine to two then podcast as and then do school how my schedule is right now is that in the morning from like eight to like nine o'clock ish I'm doing school I work on science research pretty much the rest of the day and podcasting I just try to fit in whenever I can so that has definitely have been a challenge but it changes me for the better too as a research scientist as a podcaster and just overall as a person as well it's what makes me me so and then this experience is something that i barely have done but it is having interns work for me so basically in the summertime where i work we do take interns to come research with us and give them experience. So I was actually looking for my own experience, I would say about two years ago, uh, working and volunteering in a lab and to get experience. And then I been doing this professionally for two years and just literally fresh, still fresh into a new job. I'm already training new interns, which, oh boy, oh boy. I still cannot believe I can say that, that I have new interns working for me. And yeah, I'm just so excited to be giving in, um, new incoming scientists experience, which is super, is super, super, super exciting. And then the next thing that um, is really important to me on how it matured me as like, a person and just overall helped me with my mental health is controlling my spirals. So I used to deal with a lot of spiraling. So I use, I do overthink sometimes. So in my head, I'm just like, oh, oh, if this happens, then that happens, then that happens, and that happens, then you just end up into a rabbit hole of like spirals and thoughts and it just makes you go crazy. I used to do that a lot and I am guilty of it. But now that I've learned to control them and just stop having so many rabbit thoughts, it really has helped me as a person overall. And it's made me happier as a person as well, which is super, super, super important to me. And it just makes me more pleasant to be around, I feel like. And this one is number 13. This is definitely a repeat of number 12, but it's still something that I always have to constantly remind myself. It is things only get better and not worse. So that was a lesson that definitely took me a while, like I said, to learn. But it is actually really true that things only get better and not worse. And if you're listening, if you've listened to me up to this point, again, thank you so much. I tried to end my podcast episode just like with something inspirational. And all I wanted was to remind, and if there's one message I wish you guys will take from here and what I want you guys to take from this episode is just a reminder. Things only get better, not worse. Because you can, like, Take me for example. Oh, and like I said, that's another disclaimer. My whole podcast is themed around my own personal experience. So I literally thought my whole world was ending during this point because I was stuck in, like I said, one full-time job, three part-time jobs. I was a full-time student and my friendships were falling apart. My relationships were falling apart. Like it was insane. And I felt like the whole world was against me. But once I really took a step back and took care of myself, everything healed and things got way better. So so this is a reminder. Things only get better, not worse. And definitely never, ever, ever give up. 
So with that being said, that is going to be the end of this episode of Chill Time with Kelly. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you all on the next episode.